What I saw was blackness and death and the deep coldness of space. William Shatner. Any moonwalker can tell you about the black expanse of space, which is not the absence of light, but of atmosphere, an emptiness, a lack of any way for light to reflect, refract, and scatter in shades of blue, or melt into hues of red above the Oceanus Procellarum. As our shared sun sinks behind the peaks of the great Apennine mountain range, and though the stars seem everywhere, they are far away, they can't illuminate any more than Christmas lights strung outside your grandma's trailer or summer fireflies in a field, so far away that we judge their distance by the time it takes their light to reach us. So we are always looking into the past, but seeing in the present. And those stars travel away as if someone had tried to throw us a ball from a flatbed going 75 on the interstate. Or maybe the way the siren of an ambulance stretches quiet, lowering in pitch and dissipates, even though it still screams its warning. The message it carries, carried, always bouncing down the highway and off to rest among wildflowers, the messenger, a memory the Doppler effect. This morning, my father locked himself in the concrete storage space leading up from the basement to the backyard where we'd spent the morning stacking wood as I'd done so many times as a child. And if it weren't for the way he wobbled when he walked or chose only the lightest logs or had to use his weight to swing them up and into place or had to pause to get his breath, and so hardly spoke at all, no matter how prompted. The descent into silence, a product of fear, of saying the same thing he had already said, then realizing it in shame. I'm sorry, my brain doesn't always work the way it should these days. It could have been any of those crackling winter days, father and son, taking turns to push the wheelbarrow to the back of the house, stacking firewood in the alcove by the stairs. When the last log was set in place, I leaned the barrel against the house and left him at the bottom of the steps, turning with a wave. I think that should do. Sure. That should get us through the winter. Sometimes, I hardly know what it is I'm looking at or listening to. How to tell the afterimage from the thing itself, the sound from the note still playing only in my head. Sometimes, I don't know who is pushing the wheelbarrow and who is walking behind or ahead. I'm sorry, my brain doesn't always work the way it should. When Rachel asked me, what's that? Do you hear that? There it is again. I had an image of my father on his knees by the stove with his little hatchet making kindling in the dryer logs. Just dad, building a fire, I said. Thump, 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 thump. Mistaking what I remembered for what I thought I knew. Until finally I heard the almost buried, let me out, let me out. And ran downstairs and yanked the door in with a rush of cold to find him shivering, scared and angry, snot and tears streaking his face. You locked me in. Where were you? Couldn't you hear? You couldn't hear me? I was screaming. Christ, I was pounding on the door. Sorry, I said again and again, and didn't explain how I never closed or locked anything, or how I did, and didn't hear him, and maybe didn't want to, and didn't try to show him all he had to do was climb the stairs, turn the handle, and pull, then step right out into the bright cold afternoon. Or how much it scared me right then to imagine him turning in circles in place with no star to guide him, screaming for help, locked in the space of darkness, in the darkness of space.